Hey guys, Matt Walker here from Wheels Through Time Museum. We're back in the restoration shop, and as we promised, we're gonna take you through the entire restoration of the 1937 Harley-Davidson knucklehead raffle bike. Now, every restoration back here in the shop starts in the exact same place that's right with the chassis. The frame, the fork, it's really the heart of the chassis. It's where everything starts. Now, what we're working with today, we're incredibly fortunate. When we purchased this uh, basket case project from Joe Gardella, the frame and the fork were already restored. Now, when you find an old Harley Davidson knucklehead project, there's no telling what sort of parts are gonna need to be restored, what's gonna be ready to use. You know, if you find a frame that's bashed up, twisted, bent, it could be months or possibly even years to get that frame back in working order. What we're starting with for this project is a perfectly restored 1937 one year only frame. And this frame is really as nice of a frame as I've ever seen. There's not a ding or a dent in any of the tubing. It's finished out in perfect gloss black paint. It's got everything from the toolbox strap, couple years only, the open brake stay, Big numbers back here on the brake crossover shack and mo or shaft and motor mount casting. Just a couple years, they did the big numbers. You see that XE624 with the hallmark. Uh, really, really rare stuff. Sidecar loops, beautifully intact. Perfect down tubes. It's got the early rake frame. So 28 degrees, Harley just did the early rake frame there for a few years, maybe 36, 7, 8, and 9. Uh, really, really rare stuff. And again, restored frame. We get to immediately start hanging parts on this bike. Now the fork, also one year only, 1937 knucklehead fork. This is what we call the swept leg fork. So it actually tapers forward just a hair. Now 37 front ends identifiably pretty, or are identifiable pretty easily. What we're looking at here is we've got the inside alamite grease fittings. Now they're on the insides of the springs. As they get later on, 1938, 39, they move them out here and run them there through the uh, remainder of the spring or fork years. Further, one of the really neat things about this frame or this fork is it's actually uh, an early and mid-year 37 fork only where they've got these really cool welded reinforced tabs here. So uh, kind of pieces that look like they don't belong uh, actually correct for a portion of the 37 production run. So incredibly happy to be starting right here with a restored frame and fork. It allows us really to get months ahead on our project. As you can see, there's a rebuilt parkerized seat post. It's got the early seat tee. The brake crossover shaft has already been done. This is the crossover that gets you from your brake pedal uh, back to the rear brake. So rear brake crossover shaft is good as new, restored and parkerized transmission plate, uh, axle adjusters, original axle hardware, really, really in a happy spot here. So 37 frame and fork. We're going to be able to forge right ahead uh, starting today. I want to take you guys over to the pile. Amazing pile of rare, rare stuff. So many of these components are one year only. One of the things I want to highlight first is the sheet metal. The sheet metal for this project is next to perfect. Now, it needs a little bit of work as they always do. So I'm gonna go over some of this stuff with you, but 37 Fender, they just ran this for a couple years. As you can see, it's got that early uh, shrouded three year only tail light set up. Uh, now this uh, Fender is about half restored. Uh, we're gonna be working with John Dills here to finish this thing out. John will make it absolutely perfect. And uh, this thing will be ready to bolt on the bike here shortly. Front fender, just the same. Really nice setup. Now this one here has got some extra holes in it, trim holes. Uh, this stuff will be filled. The fender will be straightened a bit. Uh, we've got a very nice narrow reproduction brace here that actually fits perfect. We're gonna install this here uh, coming up on a future show. So uh, 37 rare, rare, rare sheet metal. Now, one of the things about the raffle bikes here at the museum, you got to remember, we're on a time crunch when we restore these motorcycles. It's not often that we're able to find a project of this sort of originality. The caliber of the parts that we're working with are second to none. We take a pair of genuine 19. 
36 to 9 Harley Davidson knucklehead gas tanks. Beautifully restored. These things are already in primer. 1937, first year for the four speed shift gate of this type. Really, really excited to bolt these on our bike again. It's going to be one of the things that makes this the most original Harley Davidson knucklehead raffle bike that we've done. So, moving on for sheet metal, I got two super cool boxes here. And what we've got. These parts are so incredibly rare, guys. Um, the Dash, the Dash, 1936 and, 1936 and 37, Harley Davidson introduced the Skull Dash, got an original Skull Dash cover in virtually perfect condition. Uh, this thing is just gonna set off the look of the bike. You know, when you're stand, or when you're restoring a motorcycle, one of the most important views when viewing a bike is from the seat. It's the rider's perspective, the owner of the bike. Every time you look down, you're looking at that dash. So we've got an incredible start here. Two-year only, original dash base, early switch. Now 36 and 37, rather than the lights for the generator and the oiling system here, they actually ran gauges. So you've got an amp gauge here. Uh, tells you whether your generator's charging or you're drawing on the battery. And then you've also got an oil pressure gauge here. Now this is uh, hooked from a line to the engine. That's a vacuum line. Uh, you can see it's off right now. It's off the bike, unrestored. Uh, these two are new old stock, virtually perfect oil pressure gauges and amp gauges. So really cool pieces of work. These are just gonna set the look of the bike off. And again, you're talking unobtainium parts. They're so rare. 1936 to nine Harley Davidson toolbox. Joe had been collecting parts for this project for probably 30 years what he set aside was the best of the best and uh, really excited to be putting all of this on the motorcycle as we get there now moving on some of the you know again rare 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 parts 1937 one year only oil tank we got a box of smalls here that we're going to dig through just kind of show you exactly what goes into the build of a bike like this and how rare each of the components are like i said one year only oil tank it's got the embossed top feed line down on the bottom so normally you got the feed line in the back and the drain plug on the bottom 37 was actually the only year that they put it all right in the same spot so works off a banjo bolt again embossed top tank needs a little bit of restoration but it's really uh, uh incredibly nice and in darn good shape straight as an arrow so the stand oh these parts are incredible stand two years only 1936 and seven just to find a stand like this you know 20 years ago you might find one or two at a swap meet nowadays unobtainium so 37 only rear stand gosh this box two-year only brake pedal two hole early mount system it's got the wide pad two-year only brakes 1937 two-year only clutch pedal same so this type of clutch pedal it's what we call the two-hole backing plate this one's already been restored really really rare stuff um, happy to be putting it on this bike the skid plate now you're thinking some of these parts seem the same from about 1936 all the way through 19 60s 1970s the skid plate they ran on harleys all the way through the 1970s 36 37 38 skinny ribs so joe knew exactly what he was looking for uh, when he started assembling all these pieces and as we go on oil tank mounting plate for the oil tank clutch crossover shaft Ooh, early three-year only brake lever i shouldn't say three-year only this would be 1928 through 1939, so three years only on the knuckleheads. Original brake lever, perfect condition. Original shifters, original, this early style kicker pedal for the transmission. And then so many of the other parts, brake rods, shifter rods, battery tie downs, fender clamps. Guys, what's in this box is literally thousands of dollars just in this tiny small box here take you years to collect it all if you tried to piece it together piece by piece so incredibly fortunate to be working with a pile of great original components for this build as we get a little bit further on uh handlebars now brazed inline speedster style handlebars front and rear brakes 
original components this stuff today incredibly hard to find now the transmission we've got a beautiful complete transmission here now when i talked with joe i was a bit unsure and joe was also unsure he didn't remember if this had been rebuilt or not it feels a little stiff uh i'm gonna go through it just in case now as you can see top lid here 37 only um four-speed transmission this is what we call a constant mesh transmission they debuted this in 1936 pretty much the same transmission all the way through 1984 so shifting mechanisms are a little different case is a little different so this is the early style case it's, it's a constant mesh uh, uh, counter shaft and main shaft style transmission four speed bulletproof when you rebuild one of these you keep oil in it they last a lifetime so uh, this is going to be a great piece actually want to set this right in the bike just to give us an idea and make this uh, one step closer to to at least having the look of a completed motorcycle. Now, as we get a little bit further over here, guys, we've got a small pile of reproduction parts. Inevitably, all the original components, it's just impossible to find. So there will be some things on this bike that are reproduced by best available sources, and uh, we're gonna go over some of that stuff with you later. Now, when it comes to the heart of, of this motorcycle, the engine, 1937, Harley Davidson 61 cubic inch knucklehead engine. So to find a 37 engine nowadays, uh, incredibly rare. We're starting here with an absolutely minty pair of 37 original matched engine cases. Uh, these have actually had one of the motor mounts have been repaired, very nicely repaired. Set of early tappet blocks. Just a couple years only for these tappet blocks. Uh, they're gonna make one sweet, sweet running motor. And then the cam cover, 36 to 39, the smoothie cam cover, no fins. So a little bit later on, Harley Davidson debuts the, the finned cam cover, a little bit stronger setup. The 36 to 39 cam covers are rare as hen's teeth. So this is gonna be one incredible looking engine. Um, we're going to polish the cam cover. We're going to polish the rocker boxes. We're going to have fresh black paint on the cylinders and heads. Um, just going to be one excellent power plant. 61 cubic inches, 1,000 cc's. This thing ought to beat down the road 70, 80 miles an hour, no problem. So to finish it all out, guys, this box here and what we're looking at, I'll drag it over you guys' way. Now in this box are virtually every single component for the restoration of the engine of this motorcycle. Brand new flywheels, perfectly honed and rebuilt connecting rods, a pair of 36, 37 only rocker boxes. We're gonna go through all of this stuff in a later show so you guys can see exactly what goes into the rebuild of a 1937 Harley Davidson knucklehead engine. So guys, thanks for tuning in. We got a pile of work to do, probably 250, 300 hours left on this machine. It's time to get to work.